Greetings, sisters and brothers. It's Milton Alimadi, publisher of Black Star News, adjunct professor of African history, John Jay College here in New York City. As always, I send Pan-African greetings, sisters and brothers all over the world. I salute everybody involved in improving the lives of African people around the world. Today, once again, I'd like to make some brief comments regarding the level of suppression and ongoing escalation against civilians, violence being meted up by the dictator, uh, General Yoweri Museveni. Uh, as compatriots know, on the 23rd of August, Bobby Wine, Robert Kagulani, member of parliament, uh, was brought into uh, court, the military courts martial, and was released uh, on the bogus gun uh, possession charges. He was immediately arrested and delivered to the civilian court. Now the first point is obviously people saw his condition, his diminished condition. Uh, he's a victim of torture. Uh, Ugandans recall that just last week our demented dictator, General Museveni, issued a statement that uh, the stories concerning Bobby Wine's injuries from the torture was fake news. Sisters and brothers, we really have a demented and fake president, but we've all known that for a long time. So I won't waste much time discussing dictator Museveni today. What we need to do is to discuss and strategize how can we liberate Uganda uh, from this uh, noxious dictator. Uh, number one, I think Uganda should continue discussing amongst themselves uh, how best to approach uh, the liberation of Uganda from dictatorship. I think Ugandans, wherever you are, whether you're in Uganda or any country where you live, you should get together, communicate with other Ugandans, and discuss what are the best strategies to uh, liberate our country from dictatorship so that our youth in Uganda, Bobby Wine's generation and the younger, can actually have a better future. And obviously, when we talk about Bobby Wine, let's also mention all the other uh, unnamed people that were arrested. More than 30 people that were arrested, uh, many women. They've also been tortured. As we recall, there was a woman who was brought to the court uh, bleeding from her private uh, parts. I, I don't know what state of mind this so-called judge Ad, uh, administering this case uh, is in uh, to not have admonished the state and ordered that woman to be released immediately uh, for treatment. But it's, it's, it, it goes back to the mindset that uh, General Museveni has conditioned Ugandans to think like. And that is why it's with great urgency that we need to liberate our country. We also need to think about uh, the uh, 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 Kawuma, uh, Yassin Kawuma, who was uh, killed, he was murdered August 13 by the regime at the instigation of, uh, of, uh, of dictator Museveni. He was killed by the Special Forces Command on August 13 when this whole crisis began. We also need to remember Francis Zake, who is uh, receiving medical treatment. He was brutalized and he's been on life support. We need to remember uh, Mr. Wadri, uh, uh, Mr. Mwiru, uh, Mr. Karuhanga, uh, and uh, all those who were arrested, whose names uh, we, don't, we do not know. We need to think about all of them, and Mr. Mabike as well, who is a former member of parliament. But getting back to the main point, Ugandans getting together. Right here in New York City, last, uh, uh, a few days ago on Friday, several of us met to strategize and to exchange some ideas on how to put pressure on this dictatorship. In the countries where you reside, make sure you engage the governments because this dictator cannot survive with the uh, foreign uh, uh, financial and military support and diplomatic support that he receives. So us here in the United States, we are strategizing on some other forms of engaging the administration in this country. Now that the whole world has seen the very ugly side of dictator Museveni, which all of us, of course, we've known uh, for 32 years. Uh, we have to thank uh, sisters and brothers in Kenya 
who've come up very vigorously in support uh, of uh, the suffering uh, people uh, in Uganda. They've come out in the streets. Uh, in fact, a member of parliament uh, uh, in Kenya, Mr. Babu, actually said that if Bobby Wine is not released soon, he will lead a delegation of Kenyan lawmakers uh, to protest uh, in Uganda. Uh, it, it is not known <laughs> if the dictator would allow such a delegation to enter Uganda, but the sentiment conveyed is what is very inspiring uh, to Ugandans everywhere. There have been protests in addition to the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Sweden, uh, in Denmark, in Germany, and of course in South Africa and other countries. And these protests should continue. Uh, we here in the United States, we're determined uh, to, uh, to push this administration to cease uh, sending the $1 billion that is sent to the Ugandan regime. Because number one, it does not reach uh, the Ugandan masses uh, in the first place. And certainly, the military weapons and the training to Uganda's military does not defend Ugandan citizens. In fact, it is used to brutalize Ugandans and to maintain uh, dictatorship. Uh, uh, we saw Bobby Wine's condition. Obviously, physically, he's very diminished. He could barely walk. He was in crutches. He was supported. Uh, and you could see the emotional pain he was feeling. But at the same time, his spirit is not diminished at all. Uh, if you recall, he actually gave a people power salute at one point. So uh, it's very important for the people who have access to him and visiting him to know that uh, Ugandans everywhere and friends of Uganda are fully behind him. And not only behind him, but in behind the struggle for change away from tyranny uh, in Uganda. We need to create a better Uganda for the youth. The youth uh, have to assume leadership in Uganda because dictator Museveni's generation obviously has not done much in the last 32 years. The women also in Uganda need to take a much more prominent role in leadership. Women and the youth cannot do any worse than what uh, dictator Museveni's generation has done in Uganda. There's also been a, a, a tremendous support by the entertainment uh, industry. Uh, a letter went out, which I was uh, also fortunate uh, to assign. Um, uh, it's been signed by many prominent individuals, including Wale Shoyinka, uh, uh, Sean and Femi uh, Kuti, uh, the sons of the late great uh, Fela, uh, have signed this letter. Chris Martin, uh, Peter Gabriel, Angelique Kijo, and many other individuals. So it's very good. Uh, for Ugandans to know that there's a wide spectrum of the global community uh, that is uh, supporting you know, our struggle to create a better Uganda, a better future, a Uganda where everybody is treated equally. And finally, I would like to make an appeal to members of the armed services in Uganda, the security forces. General Museveni eventually will no longer be running Uganda. So you need to really think about these illegitimate orders coming from General Museveni that is compelling you to harm your fellow citizens, your sisters and brothers, your cousins, your aunts, uh, your mothers, your fathers, literally. You should not do that because they are in fact the taxpayers. They're the ones that pay your salary. It is not General Museveni. Where would he get the money from? <laughs> if the money did not come from the great masses. So please, I urge you, defend and protect your fellow Ugandans and do not follow illegitimate, immoral orders to harm your fellow citizens. Those are the brief words that I wanted to communicate today. I uh, thank you, sisters and brothers. Stay strong, stay united, and remember, contact a fellow Ugandan every day even if it's just two people talking and discuss the best strategies to come up with as we resist this uh, tyrant of 32 years and uh, work hard to create a better Uganda. Peace and blessings. Stay strong. May the Creator uh, protect you and your family. Thank you.